Yesterday, the Supreme Court heard the first part of a uh, two-part session that they're doing. Today, they'll hear the uh, arguments on DOMA. Yesterday, they heard the arguments on Prop 8. Uh, we're lucky to have with us, uh, joining us on the phone, Angela D. Giampolo, uh, who is an LGBT lawyer and a principal of the Giampolo Law Group and founder of uh, phillygaylawyer.com. Uh, Angela, thanks for the time this morning. I appreciate it. I know we only have you for a few minutes. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Fred. Now, were you able to uh, to actually be inside uh, the court yesterday when the hearing was being held? No. Unfortunately, people started lining up Thursday for yeah. the Monday hearing. So um, there there wasn't any opportunity to be able to get in. But I saw it the minute it aired afterwards. And based on what you saw and what you heard, because I, I, mine's being filtered uh, through the media at this point and, and what they're telling me. What did you take away from yesterday's actions and especially the questioning by some of the justices? Right. Um, out, of, out of all the pundits that are talking, I'd say Tubin is most on point, and And I agree with, with most of what he says. Based on the questioning, I don't think that we're going to see a 50 statewide sweeping ruling come June, mm -hmm. um, overturning all of the, the mini domas, all of the constitutional bans. Um, I think based on the questioning, we're a little disappointed at how far um, the Supreme Court is and how weary they are. I mean, at, at one point, Alito was likening same-sex marriage to an experiment that was created in the year 2000 in the Netherlands. Um, <laughs> you know, we were referred to as homosexuals all throughout that went out in the 70s. You know, we're, we're just gay people. And so a lot of the language and the questioning that was used uh, was, was, you know, pretty archaic and a little disappointing. Yeah, and, and some of what's being said is that they think there's an actual possibility that maybe the court won't decide at all. Uh, and, and I heard that thrown out there yesterday afternoon that maybe the court will just say, you know what, we made a mistake in taking this case on. We can't decide it. We don't want to decide it. We're just going to turn it back and leave it to the states. Uh, what likelihood is there of that happening? I think there, I think there's a really high likelihood. I mean, when I thought that a few months ago, I thought I was just being too much of a lawyer, mm -hmm. you know, because it's such a boring way to deal with the case, right? But, but standing is something that very rarely gets written about at the Supreme Court level. So there's not a lot of cases out there on standing. So now we're looking back and thinking maybe they took this case because how do you get all the way up to the Supreme Court if legally you're not meant to be there? Right. That's got to be really hard. And, and there's very few cases out there where the governor and the attorney general refuse to defend a case. So next up is the Supreme Court. So this may actually be more, I mean, more of an interesting standing case than a same-sex marriage case, but it's important to note that um, this is also a case where a state had same-sex marriage, took it away, and and now dealing with whether or not it needs to be given back. Can you give a right to a people and then take it back? So I think Prop 8 is the, they purposely took Prop 8 to start dealing with the issue, but wanting to punt it for a few years. You know, I'm in Pennsylvania. We, we have a constitutional ban. Right. And there was questioning yesterday about would it be different if this were Utah or Pennsylvania, a case with a constitutional ban where Pennsylvania never gave me the right. I don't have the right. And that's, that's what DOMA deals with. You know, the, the federal government just put a, a ban on it. So I think whereas all eyes were on the Prop 8 case, and then it sort of ended up being a dud that maybe the DOMA cases where a lot of the substantive, you know, is this a constitutional right? Because if it's found illegal or unconstitutional on the federal level, it's only a matter of time before that will trickle down. Right. And, and the states will have to change their laws depending on that. And, and a lot of people are falling in that way. A lot of people are saying, look, the federal government shouldn't be involved in this anyhow. This right. should be a state's rights issue. Where does the LGBT and other groups like that fall on that? Why not just let the states decide? And then if California wants to be stupid about it, uh, you know, and pass a law that says you can't be married, you just go to other states, you ignore California, and you go to the states where, you know, where you can get married. And California they, suffers the consequence, and at some point they go, holy right. crap, you know, we're losing tens of right. hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> I mean, and, and I think I think in saying that, that's easy to say, but deep down, that's a very naive and optimistic view of humanity, mm -hmm. right? Because gay, straight, whatever, let's look at other times in history when this happened. We're, we're, we're states and quote-unquote humans 
um, did they do the right thing uh, vis-a-vis segregation? Mm -hmm. Did they do the right thing vis-a-vis women's suffrage? Did they do the right thing vis-a-vis interracial marriages? You know, there, there was a lot of talk on... Um, you know, why the label marriage? And, and Ted Olson said, well, you know, you didn't give black people, you know, interracial unions, you gave them marriage. Yeah. <laughs> and in, in all of those cases, the federal government had to come down and say, okay, you guys aren't getting this right fast enough. <laughs> people are being hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> one way to, to look at it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So it's just a matter of, you know, and, and this is evolving more quickly than any other social issue. So we may get it right fast enough, and I think they're going to punt. And I think they're going to give us a few more years. But there are a couple cases on their way up to the Supreme Court. They should get there in about two to three years. Mm -hmm. Some states that just have bans, so not a California, but more of a Pennsylvania-type case. Um, They're Hawaii and Arizona. Um, And if we haven't gotten there fast enough, they'll have the opportunity in a few years to deal with it again and and maybe tell us, you know, we're we're not getting there fast enough. Sure. Uh, Later this afternoon, uh, when Limbaugh hits the air, we carry the show here. (laughs) He's been Uh saying he's been saying the last couple days in kind of a derogatory way. They're trying to make this argument all about love. Is there a problem? I'm trying to figure out, is there a problem with that argument? Is that wrong? Right, right. Right. You know, my my answer to that is always, uh, you know, if if this were truly about protecting the sanctity of marriage or, or you know, uh, a lot of people say, you know, this isn't healthy for kids. Um, my thing that to both of those, the sanctity of marriage and, and protecting children, is if that was truly your intent, then you would ban divorce. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many kids have just been brutalized by, by unhealthy divorces, right? We can't even get divorced because we can't get married. And, and why would you want to ban more people from getting married um, rather than if you're, if you're trying to protect the sanctity of marriage, um, you, would, you would be looking to ban divorce. So, you know, I don't think it's a negative thing to make this about love. I mean, people just want to enter into a union that has all of the legal and financial protections that, you know, I don't know if you're married, but that, that you're privy to. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and really all of these people that are, that are making it about uh, procreation or, or the sanctity of marriage or children should really look at that harder and, and realize that that's really just discrimination cloaked in, in morality, in my mm. opinion. We'd really be looking to ban divorce if that was our true intent. Well, and, and with a couple of gay brothers in my family, uh, I would hope that, you know, if they ever decided to get married, they'd have the opportunity. Neither of right. them has wanted to yet, but, you know, if the opportunity right, arose, yeah. it sure right, would be neither. nice to be able to, uh, <laughs> to, you know, to let them do that if they felt like right. they wanted to. Right, right. So uh, married people are so unhappy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Why shouldn't they why shouldn't they right. suffer along with the rest of us, right? And, and I did see something funny actually yesterday from one of my gay friends on um, on Facebook. He said he's looking forward to when they can get married because that means then they'll be on divorce court and he wants to sit and watch that. Exactly. And I want to be the judge. <laughs> That's right. So that'll be fun. Well, now are you gonna be back at the court today to uh, to watch the DOMA arguments? Yep. Yep. So if you want to talk again, um, you know, later this afternoon and or tomorrow, um, I think this will be, like I said, a, uh, a much more substantive and interesting argument. All right. Terrific. Yeah, I'll, I think we'll try to make arrangements to get you on again later on this week. Angela, thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Have yep. a good day. Thank you. Angela D. Giampolo, uh, who's an LGBT lawyer and a principal of the Giampolo Law Group and founder of uh, Philly Gay Lawyer dot com.